In this video I will help you decide if uh, 200 euros DSLR is worth your first money. So let's uh, straight up start with some comparisons. I have taken five photos of the same thing with these two cameras on different lighting uh, conditions and I will show them to you and I want you to choose which one do you think was taken on the camera and which one on the smartphone. Uh, while I show you the comparisons, I will also tell you some details about these two cameras. I will tell you for this first one that this iPhone was launched in 2016, which is 6 years ago, whereas this DSLR actually on 2009, which is 13 years ago. So this camera is actually 7 years older than the phone. Now, did you take a guess? The answer is that A is the iPhone and B was the camera. Did you guess correctly? If you did, then congratulations. And if you didn't, then um, you still have 4 more chances. Now let's continue with the second comparison. So while you make up your mind about these two, I will tell you that the iPhone has a 12 megapixel sensor and this DSLR has a 15 megapixel sensor. Many people are confused about this, but the number of pixels is, isn't the only thing that makes photos more clear, look more detailed. Alright, so in this case the iPhone was A and the camera was B. Did you guess that correctly? Oof. Let's just continue with the third comparison. I'm not sure if I have the correct number because the information about this was quite confusing but the sensor size of the iPhone seemed to be 17.28 mm squared versus 332 mm squared on the DSLR which makes the DSLR sensors almost 20 times bigger than the iPhones which would also make capturing more detail possible. So for this one number A was the DSLR and number B was the iPhone. How did you guess that? Let's jump now to the number 4. The fact for this, uh, for this time is that the DSLR has an 18 to 55 mm lens, but since it is a cropped sensor that becomes about 29 to 89 mm. And the iPhone's camera, which also has a crop sensor with a much higher cropping factor, it also has uh, an equivalent to a 28mm focal length, which means that at its shortest focal length this DSLR and the iPhone has pretty much the same uh, angle of view. For this one A was the iPhone and B was the camera. Now let's continue with the last one. The fact that I want to tell you in this last one is that the iPhone has an aperture of 1.8 versus the camera which has a uh, maximal uh, opening of the aperture to 3.5. Now did you get the fifth one correctly? For that one A was the iPhone and B was the camera. The iPhone has actually an advantage of two light stops over the DSLR and to show you what two light stops mean uh, I have taken uh, this photo right now with an aperture of f1.8 and then this other one with an aperture of f3.5. So without changing any other settings only the aperture uh, that's how big of an advantage the iPhone has on, a, on the DSLR. Now of course you can fix that by getting another lens like this 15mm that I have here, whose aperture can go as wide as 1.8, which are also called fast lenses, are actually more expensive, so that will just add the cost. Now please comment below and tell me how many of the photos you found correctly, and we will guess together how closely matched these two cameras are. Now that you saw all of these photos and you learned about some details about the two, what do I recommend? I think that if you mean it that you want to get more serious with this hobby, then an entry-level camera like this one is actually the perfect one for you, but the condition is that it must shoot in manual mode. And the reason for that is that it's going to force you to learn all of these things that I was talking about right now, all of these basics like um, aperture, focal length and ISO, what do they do, whereas when you are shooting on your phone you don't even care about them, so you will maybe never learn them. That's kind of a very good way to lay the foundation for you. Also, um, the reason why to go with a cheap DSLR is that if you change your mind later then you won't have uh, wasted so much money on gear, because that can get expensive really fast. The third reason why to get a DSLR instead of continuing to shoot with a phone is because a trained eye can tell the difference between a photo taken with the iPhone versus one with the cheap camera. Because there are things like for the iPhone for example like the images are overly sharp and you don't care about them but if you are experienced with cameras then you will, you will immediately notice that. And also these cameras have a higher depth of field as well as a higher detail on the photos because of the larger sensor. And the last advantage that you have when you buy this camera is that you can uh, like buy different kinds of lens and this camera can open up a whole different world, worlds of uh, photography to you. The cons of an old camera like this or any cameras actually for this part is that you can obviously not put them in your pocket like you can with a phone. 
that also means that you can't always have it with you uh, when you need it because sometimes uh, interesting things happen when you don't expect them and with the phone you can just snap the photo but this camera you must have gone specifically with the intention of taking photos to have it with you that's number one so it's not so practical secondly like it also in the same area of practicality uh, with these cameras you have a memory card and you need to take that out and then put it into your computer and your computer might not even have a slot for the SD card so you might need to buy an adapter and uh, firstly that adds cost and secondly it is again less practical than a phone and also to add to the point of expensiveness once you have this kind of camera and you're curious about it there are so many accessories that you can buy that uh, which you feel like maybe obligated I don't know I don't know if you feel obligated it depends on you but uh, you feel like you have a really huge variety of things to buy for these cameras that will that promise to kind of improve your experience with them like I don't know hand straps flashlights uh, microphones everything which in the end is not a bad thing but but seen in the aspect of money then expensiveness is always a minus um, I'm pretty sure at some point of the video you notice when these screens went off, just ignore that. I always forget to check on them from time to time, but I should probably just find a way to keep them turned on for longer. Anyways, uh, that was it with this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped you uh, learn some things. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. I would really appreciate that, of course. And I have a short part after this video, which is for subscribers who have already seen some previous videos when I took on a challenge. That's, and this is going to be the part of that challenge for this month. Enjoy it and have a good time.